Hi everybody, Jeremy here and welcome to lesson two. In this lesson, we're gonna start building out the first few elements of our prototype. We're also gonna go over the color tool, the assets library, and dive a little bit deeper into the selection tool. So let's go ahead and build the very first asset for our prototype, a simple button. Now I want this button to be a perfect square. So I'm gonna turn on some guides and shapes to help me do just that. So let's access the selection tool, but this time I'm going to access it from the main menu on my non-dominant hand. And I'm gonna turn on world snapping here. And I'm gonna set our snapping steps to 10 centimeters. Now reactivate the shapes tab from the tool switcher and you can see now we have some floating gray dots in our environment. So by snapping the cursor of my controller to a point in space and then holding down on my trigger button, I can draw a perfect cube. Now these gray dots are also useful for aligning shapes to your environment. So I can pick up my shape and snap it to any of these points in space. You'll also notice when I have these gray dots activated and I rotate the object in my hand, Shapes forces my object into a 90 degree or a 45 degree angle relative to the world grid. So this is very useful when aligning shapes to your world with precision. And to toggle my gray dots on and off, I simply press this button here. All right, if you remember from the last lesson, I mentioned that all the shapes in this menu here are procedural, which means we can bevel them, create rounded corners, et cetera, et cetera. So let's give that a try. So let's select the cube, which pulls up the inspector on our main menu. And just like an inspector in other 3D modeling software, you can edit the shape of your object, its rotation, scale position with precision directly from this menu. So let's go here in the inspector to chamfer and let's give our button a bit of a bevel and then let's switch the chamfer to hard edges and then i'm going to decrease the thickness just a little bit and then turn back facing off and just for fun let's round our corners too all right it's looking pretty good so we've just created the first element in our prototype now for this prototype i want five buttons so i'm going to select my object make sure my gizmo is turned on. And then I'm gonna move the object along the axis and by using my duplication button, I'm gonna make several duplicates. All right, that's looking pretty good. And now let's create a back plate for our menu. So I'm just going to come in behind the objects here and draw a back plate. And then let's just move it up here out of the way. And uh, let's give it the same treatment that we gave the buttons. All right, now to move these buttons up here so they're flush and properly aligned with the backplate, I'm gonna use our Snap to Surface tool, one of my favorite features. And I can use this option with a single object or a selection of multiple objects. So let's start off by selecting all of our buttons. So I'm gonna to go to the Select tool. And then while holding down on my Trigger button, I just move my hand through each button and you can see each one being added to my selection. Once I've selected the buttons, I release and then grab the group with my grip button and move it towards the back plate. Once this circle appears on the surface of the back plate, I press the A button on my controller, this button here with the magnet, and I keep holding the group of objects, as you can see here. So shapes aligns my object with the background and I can move it into position. And then once I get it where I want, I let go and we're good to go. All right, so let's recolor these objects. There are two ways to recolor objects and shapes. So let's start with the back plate. From my tool switcher menu, I'm going to select color, which brings up the color menu on my main menu. I'm gonna select the color I want. In this case, let's go for a darker gray. And now that color is loaded into my hand controller. So I just point at the object I want to recolor and pull my trigger button. And you can see now that that color has been assigned to that object. Now you can also recolor objects or groups of objects through the inspector. So let's recolor all of these buttons. So first we need to reselect all the buttons, but now that the back plate's in the way, how do I select the buttons without selecting the back plate? So in this case, I'm gonna move my hand close to the first button until this tiny ray cast appears. And then while holding down on my non-dominant hand trigger button, I'm gonna click on each button to add it to my selection. All right, once I'm done, the inspector appears on my main menu again. I choose the materials tab up here in the right-hand corner. And as you can see, any changes I make to the color affects the whole group. 
So let's also color these a darker gray, but just a little bit lighter than our backplate. All right, let's talk about our assets library now. So far, we've been working with our primitive shapes from our tool switcher menu. But Shapes has an entire library of primitives, pre-made shapes, and graphics that you can use in your prototype. So to access the asset library, just click on this Shapes button here from your main menu. And this will open up our assets library, which is filled with all sorts of pre-made shapes and graphics. To bring in a shape, just select the folder you want, point at the object, and then by using your grip button, grab it off the menu and bring it into your space. Our assets are divided into categories, so finding the object you need should be pretty easy. All right, so let's add some icons to our buttons. So I'm gonna go back to the library and choose icons, and then I'm going to access the actions folder. And then to scroll through any menu in shapes, just point at the menu and use your thumbstick. So scroll down a bit and let's bring in this icon here. And I'm gonna use my grip button again, grab it and bring it into the scene. And then scroll down to the bottom and choose this eyeball icon here. Now to add them to our buttons, we're gonna use the same snap to surface feature, same feature we use to snap the buttons to the back plate. I'm just gonna pick it up, hover it over the icon, and then wait for that circle to appear and then press the magnet button. And then while holding it, I can scale it to the appropriate size using my thumbstick. And then I just move it into position. So these two buttons here are the buttons we're going to use in our prototype, but just for practice, go ahead and add whatever icons you want to the other three buttons. Okay, I want to cover one other aspect of our selection tool before we conclude this lesson. In Shapes, you can also interact with objects using our Raycast system. So to use the Raycast, first you want to make sure that you're in Select Tool mode, and then move your thumbstick all the way to the left until the Raycast appears. And with the Raycast activated, you can pick up objects from a distance. You can also interact with the gizmo and duplicate objects as well. And if you move your thumbstick all the way to the right, a selection bubble appears on your controller. And anything that intersects with that bubble, I can pick up. Or by holding down on my trigger button, I can move my selection bubble through the objects to make multiple selections. All right, that's it for lesson two. I encourage you to practice in between lessons and feel free to go back and rewatch them if you need a refresher. In the next lesson, we're going to start building out our environment. So we'll see you then. Bye, everybody.